This is the first section of um, chapter one in the applied year two book on um, exponentials, correlation and hypothesis testing. And essentially we use exponential models where we have maybe some data that shows uh, exponential growth or decay and we want to basically code it or do logs so we end up with a linear shaped graph um, and the usefulness of that is that it will allow us to find the gradient and the intercepts which are often quite useful so if I label these number one and number two and we'll look at linear model uh, number one so these come from um, or number one or both of them come from these exponential type graphs where we have x and y and you'll notice on that first one um, what we have on the y-axis is log y where the y would be where the uh, x would be we have log x on that axis um, this would be a straight line if it fits the model and the intercept would be um, log a and you'll see the gradient is n so you should be able to see how it sort of fits so y equals m x plus c so that's how it matches up on number two uh, we start with the same model here or the same exponential type graph there are slight differences though because on this one if we look at the uh, information that's there and let's match it up first so you've got y equals mx plus c so that means that we have log y here where y would be in y equals mx plus c uh, we have x here like the previous one if it fits the model it'll be a straight line um, where it crosses the axis is log k log k it would be the intercept and you can see that the gradient is log b so there's slight differences between the two but essentially we're, we're starting with an exponential graph and we're doing logs so we end up with this linear uh, model and and uh, we often need to find what um, these constants are so in the first one we have maybe this type of thing going on with our data we do logs to both sides and rearrange and simplify we'll end up with this then we'll often need to find these two constants a and n may you use slightly different letters but the 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 format of the uh, equation formula will be the same here here's our second type of model again if we do logs to both sides simplify we end up with that and the two constants k and b are like the two constants we need to find so on to an example here and uh, what we need to do um, uh, where we've been given some information here so x is t y is log g g is the growth rate t is the temperature and uh, it's coded so we end up with with this okay and part a this person thinks that the constant that that minus 0 0.2215 uh, is shrinking explain why mica or mica is wrong well we let's work out the growth rate the growth rate is g so we need to work out well what's g when the temperature is zero right so the temperature is zero um, 
Now using the information at the top, that means x is zero. So let's put zero into the equation. Remember what we're trying to do is to find out what g is. Okay, what that will leave me with is y equals minus 0.2215. But remember we're trying to find a growth rate. It says y is equal to log g. So if y equals that, then log g equals that. And if I want to find g, um, using the rules of logs and changing that to a power, g would be 10 to the power of minus 0.2215. That gives you a growth rate of, and we'll just work that out, 10 to the power of negative 0.2215. And we end up with a growth rate of 0.6. Zero, zero, 005. Now that growth rate is positive. Yeah, it's a positive number. So it's not shrinking, it's growing. Okay, so she's wrong because this is positive. Okay, and if, if G is positive, it means that there's growth here, not shrinkage. Right, part B. Right, so now we're going to change the equation that we've got uh, into that model. So first of all, uh, taking the equation that we've given y, we can put log g there where y is, um, minus 0.2215 plus 0.0. .0 0.0792 and we can replace x with t yeah because that's what we've been given right so this is just about making g the subject so using the rules of powers and logs g equals 10 to the power of all of this the rules of power say that that can be split up so it's that times by 10 to the power of this 0.0792t. Now we can work these out now. Uh, 10 to the power of negative 0.2215, it works out already, which is 0.6005 times by, we can now work out 10 to the power of 0.0792 and we get looks like 1.2 I'll just check that 10 to the power of 0.0792 yeah it's pretty much 1.2 times by 1.2 to the power so we've now got the values of the constants so k is the number at the, the front k is 0 0.6005 and uh, b is 1.2 there or thereabouts okay so you should now be in a position where you can do exercise a 1a on pages 3 to 5